Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Folks, it's Tuesday, May the 17th, 2022. Let's talk NBA playoffs. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, Boston is emotionally exhausted, in my opinion. They just played a live or die game seven against the defending champion Milwaukee Bucks, right? Understand to get to game seven, they had to play a live or die game six against the defending champion Milwaukee Bucks. Now, quick turnaround, they're playing the Heat in Miami. And of course, the Heat, they're rested, folks. They're rested. Now, I'll agree, Boston won the season series between the two teams. But I like the Heat in game one. Right? To quote Meatloaf, given that the Heat are rested and at home, two out of three ain't bad. Let's also own up to the fact that this is going to be a defensive struggle for both teams, right? Just understand in terms of pace, the Heat are 28th out of the 30 teams in the National Basketball Association. Boston's 24th. Now, I keep hearing about Boston's defense. Would it shock you to know? that Miami's Bam Adebayo is one of the league's best defensive players. Folks, he's been on the all-defensive team two times. Would it shock you to learn that Jimmy Butler has been on the all-defensive team five times? Folks, Miami's going to be able to match Boston defensively. Now, I'll agree, both teams have had some injuries. Kyle Lowry's out for Miami, right? Robert Williams III is not playing every game for the Boston Celtics. I'm expecting Miami to take game one. There is a possibility, as I see it, that Boston is just going to fall apart in game one, just like Phoenix just fell apart in game seven of their matchup against Dallas in the Western Conference, right? For that reason, I'm a little bit nervous to deal with over-unders in Game 1. But I do like Miami to win Game 1. I'm expecting defenses to rise to the occasion in Game 2. And before that game takes place, let's just say I'm thinking Game 2 is going to be an intense, low-scoring affair. Right, so right now, the only visibility I have really is Miami in game one. I'll take my chances. I like the Heat to win game one. Right, I'll take the Heat on a money line. From this seat, I'm expecting the teams, once they refamiliarize themselves with each other, to get really defensive. I'm expecting the under in game two. Right, game two, of course, is subject to change after game one. Let's make sure everyone gets through game one healthy. Let's talk about the West. Folks, Jason Kidd has Dallas playing inspired basketball, doesn't he? Dallas is 17-6 and six since the All-Star break. But what I want people to realize is you can't trust the numbers with the Golden State Warriors. You simply can't. Because Clay Thompson was out early in the season. Because Steph Curry was out later in the season. In other words, this is a team where you look at the numbers. Keep in mind, Golden State, a higher seed than Dallas as it is. But Golden State has had key players, both Splash Brothers, out for periods of time this year. Right? This is that team with older players who've been there and done that. Who have targeted the postseason. I don't think you can trust the regular season numbers that much. 
Understand, too, Dallas has a secret. It's a Jason Kidd secret. They have the slowest pace in the entire league. Folks, they're 30th out of 30. As the world is focused on 23-year-old Luka Doncic, Dallas is actually a defensive team. I don't believe that defense is going to hold against the offensive juggernaut that are the Golden State Warriors. You know, I'll agree <clears throat> that Steph is having an off year by his standards, right? He's been more of a volume shooter lately than the stole cold, accurate sniper he usually is. But understand, Golden State has a guy, <clears throat> Jordan Poole, who, if they're playing a non-physical defense, in other words, a defense different than the Memphis Grizzlies, can actually have you believing at times that he is Steph Curry. Right? The outside shooting on Golden State is really spectacular, right? The Splash Brothers plus Jordan Poole. Now, in this mix, people might forget that they also have Andrew Wiggins. Let me say this, too, about Wiggins. <clears throat> He's a bit interesting because you'll watch him at times and you'll realize that while the world is looking at Draymond Green for defensive brilliance, <clears throat> right? While the world is distracted, Andrew Wiggins can actually be a shutdown defender. You start to realize that Andrew Wiggins on this team, this is different than Wiggins early in his career, is actually a glue guy. He brings an athleticism that the team otherwise lacks. Folks, Clay Thompson is no longer Clay Thompson, at least not for now, because of his injuries. Great shooter. Obviously, he just hit eight threes in a game. But he's not the lockdown defender. Let me tell you another secret. Draymond Green is slowing down on defense. The guy bringing athletic defense, and it's very important now because Iggy is out, folks. Because Gary Payton Jr. is out. The guy bringing athletic defense, and that's important when you're facing a Luka Doncic, is Andrew Wiggins. This team is so well put together that you look at the guys Right? You say, Draymond, he's 6'6". Six, six. Wiggins, he's around that height. Right? Where are the tall guys? But yet, somehow, they were able to out-rebound Stephen Adams and Memphis in a game. The Warriors had 70 rebounds in one of the games. Right? Looney, and you need to know these names. Looney is a major force when he needs to be. If you dig a little deeper, you'll find out that Looney was one of the best high school players in the country. He was highly regarded. Now, he's a glue guy on an offensively blessed Golden State Warriors team. Folks, I don't think Dallas, with its slow pace can deal with all of this. Understand, while Chris Paul in the Phoenix series, and I was surprised Phoenix lost Game 7. Let me say that. I expected Phoenix to play Golden State, as I said earlier here, in the finals of the Western Conference. But while Chris Paul was taking mid-range jump shots, right, while... Phoenix's offense was such that they weren't really trying to stretch the field. You know that nobody in this league 
has the range outside of Brooklyn. The shooting range that the Golden State Warriors have. Right, folks, the Warriors, much faster pace. They have the 13th pace in the NBA. If Dallas thinks against this Golden State team, which, by the way, at home was 31 and 10, and they have home court advantage in this playoff series. If Dallas thinks that Golden State won't go on offensive outbursts, if Dallas thinks that they can control the pacing of this so that these games are lower scoring, if Dallas thinks Golden State is going to stand around and watch Luka destroy them when they have a former defensive player of the year in Draymond Green and when they have backup, Right? Andrew Wiggins. I think Dallas is kidding themselves. Here again, like Miami, Golden State is rested. Golden State is at home. Now, I'll agree. Dallas beat Golden State three out of the four games during the regular season. That's a cause for concern. But folks, both Splash Brothers are back, and another excellent defender, Otto Porter, is back. Right now, I am concerned that the Warriors have two of their best defenders out. Right? I don't think Iggy or Gary Payton shows up for this playoff series. But they do get Steve Kerr back. Right? And let's face it, as much as I like Jason Kidd, Steve Kerr is the guy with the rings as a head coach. I expect the Golden State Warriors to beat Dallas. I'll concede that it's going to be a tough series because... Dallas has adjusted to Jason Kidd's personality. Dallas is peaking right now. Right? But you're telling me that a team with really a non-physical defense and a slow pace is going to try to beat the offensively blessed Golden State Warriors. I just don't see that happening. So here again, we'll take this game by game. I like the rested home team with the better three-point shooters. The Golden State Warriors in game one over the Dallas Mavericks. I just think mentally it's very tough to go from a game seven. In Dallas's case, it's a game seven on the road. And then to stay on the road, travel to another city, and deal with arrested Steph Curry. All right, let me also say this too. If both Steph and Clay are hitting at the same time, like they did, by the way, at the end of the fourth quarter in game six against Memphis, forget about it. It's a wrap. Right? Dallas would need to trade for Memphis's Dylan Brooks to have a chance against this offensively blessed Golden State Warrior team. That's how I see it. I like Golden State in game one. I like the home teams in game one of the NBA Conference Finals. We'll see how the teams mix before making further calls. I am leaning right now, though, to the under. In game two of the Miami-Boston series, right? If Miami wins game one, as I suspect, right? The personalities on that Heat team, understand, you know, Pat Riley has picked players like himself. You know, Victor Oladipo made an all-defensive team, right? These are guys who want to hold serve. 
They don't need motivation. So if Miami wins game one, they're definitely going to want to smother Boston out in game two. Right? Keep in mind, too, this Heat team is underrated. They were just in the NBA Finals. Right? Think back to LeBron's last ring. Right? In the bubble a couple years ago. In that NBA Finals, if I'm right, you double-check me on this. Jimmy Butler had two triple-doubles. Right? Understand, too, certain guys on the Heat are better than advertised. Tyler Hero now has been in the league a couple of years. Right? He's now coming into his own. Miami's built a little bit differently than some of these other teams. They have these defensive Hawks. Then they have an array of three-point shooters. Right? Don't be fooled by the 28th pace if a shootout develops. They have the shooters to compete with a team like Golden State. So given that Miami was just in the finals, given that Eric Spolstra is one of the best head coaches in the league, and he's going up against a rookie head coach. I know Boston's head coach has done a great job, but this is his first year. You don't have the body of work that you have with a Steve Kerr or an Eric Spolstra. Right? I get the feeling that Boston, which is going to try to fight back, might be done in by not having home court in this series. I like Miami in game one of the Miami-Boston series. I'm leaning to the under in game two. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.